on my arm I'll always keep you safe from harm I want you to be my bride And sing, sing, sing along While I'm walking Hell, hell, hell is your love, girl Hell, hell, hell is your love Well, you gotta go some love I've got a lot to love to give I've got a kiss for your name on A very good afternoon and welcome to finals afternoon for the women's Canadian singles and the men's kayak. I'm David Goldstrom and a very warm welcome to you all and thanks for joining us here on Eka TV on Facebook. If you enjoy what's coming up then please uh, follow and like and let us know as we look forward now to the women's Canadian single finals with the 10 that have qualified from this morning's semi-finals to get us underway. The course here, 250 metres long, and you can see we do have some VIP spectators, about 300 in all socially distanced and all wearing face masks, and uh, a huge congratulations to the Czechs for the enormous effort of getting this on. There is our menu, the first two individual finals you can see there now will be almost immediately on the women's canoe uh, final and the team finals to follow a little later in the afternoon. And this is the uh, lineup for the uh, competition and uh, there you can see Teresa Fisarova, who was quickest in the semi-finals, tend to go through. So these are the young women who didn't make it uh, through to today's uh, final. A really uh, challenging course, and uh, it's going to be pretty interesting. Three Czechs, three French, Austria, Spain, and Poland and Slovenia all represented. But this is uh, Teresa Fisarova, who uh, was the best in the semi-final through this 25-gate course with six upstream gates. Gate four here, the first of the upstreams on this pretty strong water, and Teresa, at the end of her semi-final run, uh, emphasised that even though it's home water, it really was uh, challenging, but she likes hard courses, and Teresa... Uh, runner-up in the World and European Championships uh, three years ago but a real chance of getting a European gold. The course really works you across from side to side and uh, as you can see she uh, picked up one penalty all the way uh, down the uh, track uh, Fisarova and that was uh, gate number seven and there you can pick up the uh, spectators on the river right of the bank here terrific job by uh, Czech television along with the Czech canoe federation to get this rolling and the finals will be over this very same course and uh, Coming down to 21, one more uh, upstream gate to negotiate, and Teresa keeping the canoe working all the way through, keeping that movement and flow going. With uh, good power and something at the end as well to sprint to the line. There are the facts and figures about the course. I'm actually uh, commenting remotely from the UK, but this is the course that they'll take, as you can see, a long sprint of about 30 meters to the first of the three staggered downstream gates. 
before you break out to gate number four, and then another pattern of uh, offset staggered gates until you come to the right hand breakout into 10, 11, and 12, working hard through some very strong water, 14, and now this double upstream, quite demanding to get across through the stopper and then to 17. 17 to 18 is a challenging move. 20 upstream has uh, caught quite a few. And then 21, 22, and this is where the fatigue sets in and the lactate builds up. And then this long sprint from 24 through 25 to the line. So a, a sprint at the beginning, a sprint at the end, and a lot of technical moves in the middle. So this is the order in which they're going to start. They go in reverse order according to the times that they set in the semi-finals. So Lucy uh, Baudou of France, she had four penalties. Her running time was 1.36.57. So she's going to be the pathfinder and uh, set the targets. The temperature, well, we were thinking it might get a little bit warmer to 20, but not quite there, but it's still very pleasant with sunshine, as we see uh, Lucy uh, Baudou. So Lucy out of the start gate, 27 years of age, uh, kayak world European team champion last season, through gate number uh, three and a careless touch there. In fact, gate number two, apologies and a touch on four so not an auspicious start pressure right on from the beginning here there's really no margin for error and uh, lucy unfortunately is going to pay the uh, penalty for uh, that wayward start <laughs> This competition won last year by Mallory Franklin of Great Britain. The British and the Germans uh, not competing. The British and the Slovaks not competing in 2020 at all. The Germans, supported by the police and the army, as uh, she gets another touch, um, not able to come to Prague. And the Russians couldn't get here because of travel restrictions. But 20 countries we have. And in this lineup, three for Czech Republic, three for France, Austria, Spain, Poland, and Slovenia, all represented. 16 out of the double upstream now, and to 17. Watch this move to 18. You can see it's really quite demanding. 19 in the drop, and then break out to 20 here in the eddy. And then down to the Biggest drop on the course here. St sits back, comes to the last upstream, and there you can see the journey through uh, 24, which has caught one or two, as has the last downstream gate here, 25. And now you put the power on for this 20 metre sprint to the line, and there is the time 135 points. 83 and uh, Lucy 136.57 she had four penalties in the semi-finals so uh, not happy with that so uh, next away Claudia Swarzynska representing uh, Poland. Claudia, runner up uh, five years ago in the European team championships, a silver medal, only 21. And uh, Poland, like one or two nations, rebuilding their talent base. And you can see she's five hundredths quicker, but she also has that one touch on uh, gate number six.
Switching the uh, blade as she's forced across the river yet again. 14. Now break out to 15. Keeps the canoe moving, kneeling, and working with that single paddle through and up and round 16. That's okay. Chasing Lucy uh, Baudou. She should be uh, up on the uh, French racer and is by, as you can see, 2.3 in the green. Break out again. Not as effective as you would like, but now coming to the section of the course where you really start to feel the fatigue. The fatigue. Remember, they've had a semi-final run earlier today. Almost caught by the stopper, but managed to negotiate it now to 24. Needs to be inside 135 to take the advantage. Claudia Zwolinska of Poland. It's tight, but she uh, just gets there by 0.57 of a second. So uh, Zwolinska now to be followed by this talented Spanish woman, Miren uh, Lascano. Miren, uh, 23, under 23 uh, Canadian singles champion in 2017 from San Sebastian. And third in the European team championships here in Prague in the team championship. So uh, Miren just caught a little there, these precious fractions drifting away. Chasing the Polish paddler. And a touch on eight there. Just fighting this uh, heavy water. 10, okay, through that upstream, the second of the upstreams. Trying to take tight lines. But the important thing in this final is to be not only fast, but also to be clean. It's interesting to note that uh, in the semi-finals, not a single clean run by these women in the single canoe category. The Olympic category for Tokyo, of course. Fingers crossed that it goes ahead next season. 17, now 18, and you can see their real effort to get through 18. Wasn't perhaps the most economical, and there you can see the uh, deficit or has really uh, increased behind uh, Svolinska. Still another upstream, the final upstream to take here. There's no respite on this course and a demanding opening sprint and a demanding finishing one as well comes after gate 25 here we go just a little bit offline now and heading for the uh, finish and lascano 137.49 and that's uh, 223 behind slovinska so losing time all the way down the course fatigue setting in and taking its toll Eva Alina Hotchevar, 2018 junior world champion, as you can see, from a famous paddling family, particularly uh, Simon Hotchevar. Just 18 years of age. Useful wild water paddler, also in earlier days, and a European silver medalist in 2018 in the teams and Slovenia strongly represented Ochiva well to the four on the clock now but needs to maintain this
Yeah, real encouragement. You get this from the Czech audience here. They support everybody. If you're going well, they're congratulating for you. And if you're uh, falling to the wayside, they're commiserating and hurt. Still encouraging you down the remainder of the course. Up on the clock at the moment here. And uh, Ava doing uh, pretty well at the moment. She's one of the outsiders, to be honest, but the French and the Czechs are most favoured with three apiece getting through to this final, so they are the dominant force, but that was pretty tight and pretty good by her. She needs to be uh, inside 135.26. She's still got another upstream gate to negotiate. The touch on 14 doesn't help her cause either. Another touch on uh, 20. And uh, 22 also, so the six seconds of penalties and it's sort of gone away from her here and she had only one touch in the semi-finals in 133.43 seconds but unfortunately uh, 138 so she's outside the top three at the moment on her way this is uh, gabriella satkova for the czech republic the first of their trio of finalists on home water Satkova, not far away from her 19th birthday. Runner-up in the under-23 Team Worlds and 2018 Junior World Champion in this boat. So the Czechs building another strong force in the canoe like they are in the kayak women which you can see and hopefully enjoy with us tomorrow very problematic now having missed gate 12 and having had to go up and go round and that's cost her a lot of time she was going uh, pretty well still in with a chance to take the lead here though having said all of that So far, through 18, avoids the touch. 10 seconds to the good, despite those few problematic moments. And it looks as if the first of the Czech paddlers is going to take the advantage away from uh, Claudia Swolinska. One more upstream. You can see a lot of power, a lot of fight here, but uh, good line to get through 24, now has to correct for 25. So that just takes a little bit more time. But new leader. So, Gabriela Satkova, 13 seconds ahead of Zolinska. Lucy Baudou down to third place and off the podium, Miren Lascano. That's the uh, current state of play. And you can see Satkova, a clean run, but it's beatable. Satkova with 121.75. And that is uh, almost six seconds quicker than she did in the semi-finals so improvement for the first of the checks and uh, next to come it's nadine uh, varachnik of austria the only austrian to uh, get through to the finals today she is the bronze medalist from last year's world championships and also has got a, a decent record on this course. Yeah.
if I uh, go back a bit and let's focus on her now as she comes to gates one, two and three, the downstream offset stagger gates. Touch there on uh, gate number eight as you could beat number six. Time wise, she's uh, up there with Satkova at the moment, despite that uh, touch. Now losing, uh, yeah, bits and Peter now in trouble here at uh, gate 12. And a touch as well to add to it. Oh, sorry, 14, I beg your pardon. So the time has now drifted away and it's going to be difficult for her to uh, overtake Sakova from this position. Not much of the course left in which to try and claw back some of the lost time and... You can see the deficit here, 13 seconds. And Claudia Zvalinska finished with a 13-second deficit behind Satkova. So even second place now definitely looks out of uh, her reach. So down into a disappointing uh, sixth place. So four to go, and it's uh, Claire Jacquet of uh, France who is next to start. So uh, Lucy uh, Baudou still in third place so far and the French have got Claire and uh, next uh, Lucy Priou to follow her teammate Claire runner up a couple of years ago in the Euro te European team championship that was here in uh, Prague She was a, a World Cup winner, race winner in 2019 in Bratislava and also a bronze medalist in the 2018 Team Worlds. Touch on 12 and... does that well drops down takes 16 without any uh, fuss but you can see that Gabriela Sakova still has the commanding advantage 17 seconds and that uh, suggests that she's not going to make the podium unless she miraculously finds a uh, four or five seconds in the very last phase of this course here only one clean run so far and that's come from the leader Satkova and hasn't really uh, found anything. Disappointing run from uh, Jacquet. And 
Zake, who had a time of 126.81, her run time, and take over, take off those uh, penalties, the four seconds, and it would have been 136, so she'll be disappointed. Now, Lucy uh, Prio for France. Really their last chance to go for the top medal. A teammate, Lucy Badu, still clinging on to third place, but some strong challenges to come. So this needs to be something special from this woman. Under 23, runner-up in Krakow in the under 23 worlds. Only 23 years of age, promising. Decent uh, pace right through uh, this section of the course. So far, this looks like a, a good challenge, but you can see again, there's uh, a problem and there's the lost time. So that's made a big difference. From being three seconds up earlier on the course, she's now, well, five seconds or so down so that's a loss of eight seconds that's a, a huge disappointment for her there it is uh, 5.35 just a little bit more than i uh, anticipated and can she claw a little bit back uh, this would suggest a, a chance for her to go into second place but if she does she's going to knock her teammate off the podium So Lucy Priou uh, chasing Gabriela Satkova, who she, uh, as you can see, she's a full gate behind. And uh, the remaining uh, 15 metres of sprinting, and it'll put her into second place. It is a clean run. So first and second clean run. Satkova, Lucy Priou, Claudia Swadinska holding on to third place at the moment for Poland but still two to come and they're both from the Czech Republic and so we know that it's going to be a Czech winner but the question is which Czech winner Teresa Kneblova first to go runner up in the junior worlds last year and then Teresa Fisarova her teammate to follow her the fastest qualifier from the semi-finals on seven doesn't uh, help her cause but for that she'd have been uh, in the lead by about 0.3 of a second so there's still an opportunity to claw this back and go for Gabriela Satkova's time Neblova only 17 what a prospect for the Czech Republic and the future Olympics 15 now across to 16. This is uh, good paddling by her. Drops, but keeps working that canoe round. Sitting, kneeling, and working that single blade. 17 to 18 is tricky, and she's in trouble here. Very tight to that gate, and she's missed that gate, and now she's got to go all the way up and round. And you can see how tight and close she was to uh, Satkova's time and that has all in a flash disappeared so big errors and they've cost her her chance of going into the gold medal position 121.75 is the leading time and with uh, two gates and the final sprint to go, that's the difference between her and Satkova, her teammate. But as I said, she's 
Young and again uh, looking to see whether she can get onto the podium and uh, gets into third place, pushes Claudia Svalinska off the podium. It's Sakova for the Czech Republic, Lucy Priu for France and uh, Kneblova. So Gabriela Sakova, Lucy Priu for France know that they have medals. But what colour they will be will be determined by this woman, Teresa Fissarova, who's been knocking on the door to achieve a gold medal performance. Runner-up in the Worlds and Europeans three years ago. She's been uh, twice second and once third in recent uh, Canadian single World Cup races as well. Early 20s. Real chance now to be fast and clean through this course. The winner of the semi-finals. Satkova a second to the good in the green. Round 10, the second of the upstream gates. So the Czechs would love a gold and a silver. At the moment, they've got a gold. And uh, France in second place. Poland in third. So, uh, so far, so good. Time is good, almost uh, 1.6 seconds uh, advantage into the last phase. One more upstream to negotiate, and this is looking pretty good here. No touches, but there are signs of fatigue. She's just tiring a little bit now. Satkova with 121.75. This is going to be pretty close between her and Fisarova. Fisarova, who's been the dominant force, but Satkova's got it by uh, 0.3 of a second. Fisarova has to settle for silver. That's what she's been collecting last year and uh, in World Cups and also uh, uh, formerly in World and European Championships. And there it is again. Runner-up spot for Fisarova, but Gabriela Satkova is the winner of the 2020 European Championships. And uh, Gabriela Satkova coming up to her 19th birthday, the Junior World C1 Champion of 2018, now the European Champion for 2020. And Satkova... I suddenly realized and it's a check one two with Lucy Priu in bronze for France well the occasion has uh, overcome a bit of the social distancing uh, unfortunately but uh, the Czechs will be delighted with this and uh, predictably a very strong team on home water Kneblova down in sixth place but Gold and silver to the Czech Republic. France in the third place, but some way back, Lucy Prio. Poland, uh, Claudia Srolinska, that's a decent effort for her to finish in fourth place. Lucy Badu giving the French uh, two in the top five. Gabriela, congratulations. You won European senior title after two uh, European world titles. How is it for you? I, I can't believe it. I mean, it's just amazing, and I didn't think it's going to be enough with my run, but so, well, I'm so satisfied. Uh, you made one big mistake, but uh, it was okay because uh, you you won the race um, for the first time, or for the second time in a senior team. Uh, how different is it between two years ago? I mean, it's quite different because I'm two years older, so I was, uh, I think, more, um, I don't know, uh, I had a bigger self-esteem this time because I'm older and uh, I've competed at many competitions, so I was quite motivated and I'm quite satisfied that I did it. You are European champion, but the uh, Olympic Games, uh, it's not for you because it wasn't enough. Uh, are you 
Uh, okay with it? Yeah, of course I am because I think that Teresa deserves it, deserve, deserve it because she's really strong and really good and I think that it's her who should compete at the Olympic Games and I will cheer for her, of course. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you so much. Nice touch of uh, sportsmanship, so to speak, at the end there from Satkova and congratulations to Gabriela for uh, performance uh, surprised herself a little bit but very pleased and of course uh, Fisarova just uh, the victory she was looking for and arguably she was favorite to achieve just uh, eluding her as a result of those on course errors where she had to go back upstream and come round and it's cost her the precious time So that's the one, two, three for the women's uh, Canadian singles. And uh, very shortly, we'll be turning our attention to the men's kayaks. As you can see, the crowd there masked up as they must be, according to the regulations, although there are one or two people there who aren't, who should be. Um, just about 300 have been invited into the stands here to provide some support for all the paddlers. And this, who knows, this could be the one and only big competition of the canoe slalom season with COVID uh, raising its head around Europe. But it's great that uh, the Czech Federation... I want to pass on my congratulations to Jaroslav Pollard, the president of the Czech Canoe Slalom Federation, for the work he and his team have done to put this on and make it possible. It's a fantastic job. But now let's concentrate on the men's finals. 15 of them in the finals. Just to say the women's result is unofficial at the moment, but if there's any change, I will let you know as we uh, concentrate now on the 15 who've gone through to contest the European final. Amazingly, uh, three from Switzerland, three from the Czech Republic, two from France, eight countries in all, and eight of last year's finalists in the lineup this afternoon. Under really nice skies here. And this is the way they qualified Quentin Bergy for France, the fastest, the bronze medalist from last year's European Championships. Can he capitalize on that? And then you can see uh, Nico Testen getting in, but one or two. Gabriel de Costa from Belgium looks as if he might make it, and Samuel Hernandez, it went all wrong for the Spaniard as well. So let's have a look at uh, Bergi's run. And this was it. Uh, going quite early, didn't uh, qualify anywhere near fastest in the heats. It was uh, one touch that caught him out. But this always puts pressure on the field when you get an early starter and you can see well to the fore. Very accurate. Good lines into 15 and effective across to 16. Keeps that kayak moving. Then across to this tricky move to 18, but he manages it well. And also it lines the boat through 19 for the breakout into 20. That was really well done. A bit gymnastic. It wasn't perfect, but it was OK. And then you get this real feel of the power of the water. As he comes round to the last two gates and again, he started with a sprint, now he's finishing with a sprint, right through 25, onto the flat water, and uh, coming through to uh, finish Quentin Berge. His time actually uh, 99.54 uh, 
His running time, 97.64. So that was the past. Now we look forward to the present. 250 metres, the journey doesn't sound long, but it's tough. Three and a half metres, the drop from start gate to finish line. Six upstream gates, uh, two seconds, the penalty for any touch by body, boat or blade. And 50 seconds if you completely miss the gate, which of course will take out your medal opportunity. Here's another way of looking at the course and out of the start gate to on this flat water section to the first three staggered gates, all downstream, break out to four. There's some water that you need to avoid on that approach to four. Rough water and then to 10 in the eddy, close to the side, 11 and 12 into midstream, and right across the course to 14 to the double upstream. Crucial moves, these tricky 17 to 18, 19 to 20. There have been touches on 20 aplenty. And through to 21, 22. This is where you can't afford to make any errors if you want a medal and across the finish line. Well, Boogie, as I said, was the fastest in 97.64. That was his running time. This is going to be really interesting to see how we go in this uh, final. Nico Teston of Slovenia will be first man away. And uh, then uh, great to see Antoine Lone, who uh, represents Portugal, to make this final. That's really good to see him in there. Um, he's an outsider for medals, but great that he's qualified. And there you can see Peter Kauza, who's a real legend and has got good results on this course. And the Swiss with three in the final. Worth uh, noting uh, Peter Kauser's performances. He was the champion in Prague in 2018, ahead of Vic Printis and uh, Yiri Prishkovich. It was Slovenia, Czech, Czech. And we have both Vic Printis and Prishkovich and Peter Kauser in action today so first man to uh, get away is going to be uh, Nico uh, Testen the defending champion is Vic Prindis ahead of Darius Propiella and Quentin Bergen who are all involved in today's final so down through two to three Always good if the first man can put a challenging time down. We've had plenty of slalom races in the past where the man going first ends up on the podium, it's, so it's not impossible. Nico, runner-up in last year's European Team Championships for Slovenia. So far, so good. 15 to 16, appreciation from the spectators. Some Slovenian flags in the crowd there. Keeping it clean. Setting the time, 66.67. Time to note on that split for those that follow. Really good feel of the way this course drops away to gate 21. Tight to that, but he needs to to make the line to 22 and 23, the upstream. Now comes round the stopper to 24. Immediately uh, corrects the line for 25. This is not bad by uh, Nico Teston. And 101.81 uh, in a clean... Uh, run he was clean in the semi-finals in 105.83 so uh, that is four seconds quicker so well done to uh, nico for that effort whatever happens the fact that he's improved in the final that's a really excellent 
way to finish his Saturday. Although it won't finish it because he'll be in the team event a little later. Now, really delighted for Antoine Lornay. Seventh, as you can see, in the World Championships. A personal best last year in La Seo de Guel. So what can he do in the Europeans? He's 27 and has been consistently improving. The Portuguese known perhaps more for their sprinters like Fernando Pimenta than they are for uh, their slalom paddlers. But it's good to see that they've got someone who is world competitive. Slightly different line, but kept the boat moving, kept the kayak moving, which is essential through this next pattern of downstreams. Chasing the Slovenian. Well, the clock not actually giving us a particularly accurate picture there of Nico Teston's uh, split time. We'll uh, catch up with it in a minute. So uh, don't worry about that. We'll just concentrate on Lorne's uh, performance here. So through 16. So five gates to go and uh, 5.24 seconds behind so apologies for that little problem with the timing there but that's too much to recover from i don't think he can overtake the uh, slovenian but at the moment uh, still clean which is good lone who had a two second touch 103.58 was his running time and uh, where is he? He's outside that. Also, he's lost on time and he got uh, a clean run. So a clean run, better, but just that little bit slower. And so goes into second place some uh, four and a quarter seconds, a little bit more than that, behind uh, Nico Teston. Crespo of Spain will be next, the bronze medalist from last year's World Championships in Spain. There it is for you. And 32 years of age, been paddling seriously internationally since 2004. Won a, a gold last year as part of the Spanish team. And as far as the Europeans was co concerned, he got a bronze four years ago in the European Team Championship. So some honours. But, of course, uh, what he achieved uh, last year, the bronze medal in the world, that is his highest achievement so far. Beneath that spray deck, the knees pumping there to drive this kayak forward. There's the first split time, but uh, I'm not sure that... Uh, yeah, the uh, clock is unfortunately doing some or giving us some incorrect information at the moment. So, Nico uh, Teston, he is the fastest uh, so far, but this could be a whole lot quicker. Again, five gates to go. Touch on 17. So Crespo Well I think he's that's what he's going for a two second penalty and he's going for second place because he's not going to overtake Nico Teston so the Slovenian stays ahead and second place it is and even if you took off that two-second penalty, 103.16, that would be a disappointment, I've got to say, for uh, Crespo. 103.02 was his running time from the semi-finals with one two-second touch, so 
they've been expensive and it's difficult to see him or indeed uh, Antoine Lorne holding on to podium positions. But now the first of the three Swiss, and you can glean from that caption there that this man loves big water. Well, this water may not look the biggest, but it is powerful. And so uh, let's see what uh, Dimitri can make of it. Not a bad start through the first four gates. That's okay. Comes to seven. Eight and nine. A second to the good. Hesitation just lost the line there as a result of being wrong from the exit of the previous gate. So what he had, he's now lost. Now he's got to try and regain it in this central section. And just got held there again. These are all the little fractions that add up to deny you. But still looks to have plenty of energy, plenty of power through 18, nice enough. Now this needs to be tight. Well, it's not uh, perfect, and there was... Was there a touch there? Yes, there was. And just looking at that, uh, these are important moments. You can see those touches, 20, 21, 22, and that's where the game is lost. As a result of uh, those touches six seconds he's going to miss the podium and disappointment for a run that started with promise but fourth place and uh, holds his head there and ends up being uh, nine and a half seconds slower if you take off the six penalties he would have been three and a half seconds he would have uh, just been about in third place but disappointment for the first of our three Swiss there's our current leader, Nico Teston. Long may it continue, says he. Now, Darius uh, Popiella. You need to keep on the right side of this guy because he was very close in the European Championships in Po last year. Runner-up. Runner-up uh, to, of course, uh, Vit Prindis of the Czech Republic. This is uh, not bad so far, but remember, there are faster people from the semi-finals to come. So you really need to make this count. He needs to find at least another couple of seconds. Nobody inside 100 seconds yet, and that touch, that doesn't help either. 13, two-second touch. So, still chasing Nico Teston's time. Now, but for that touch, he would have been just a second behind, and that would give him a really good chance. I just don't see him clawing back three seconds in what remains of the course here. Darius. So Nico Teston knows that he remains uh, in first place. And, uh, well, 105 for uh, Darius uh, Popiela, but there's a 50 on gate four that's appeared, and I'd like to see that replay. 
So, Nico still smiling. And this is the uh, situation at the moment. Five of the 15 have gone. And the medals at the moment in the hands of Slovenia, Spain and Portugal. So uh, now things could uh, warm up a little bit with the first of the Czech challengers to uh, come. Bit Prindis, Petr Kauza, just having a final uh, warm up and Frenchman uh, Boris Neveur and uh, teammate Quentin Burgi still to uh, come. But next up, it's going to be uh, Vavrinek uh, Hradilek, the Olympic silver medalist in uh, London. Again, another very experienced paddler in his early 30s, world champion here in Prague in 2013, and uh, also uh, runner-up in the European Championships in uh, 2016 in Liptovsky Mikulas. No Slovaks in the lineup today, but on his way now, Hadrilek for the Czech Republic and already the encouragement building through gate two and down to uh, three. Nicely through there. You can see his paddle strokes are long, quite deceptive how fast he actually moves the boat. This is a good start by Vavrinek. This will challenge Teston's time, and it does. One and a half seconds, uh, plus a little bit more to the good. So, first phase, excellent. And for just a couple of hundred people, they're making a mighty noise. Across to 16. Accomplished that uh, double upstream gate uh, complex pretty well. 17, got held there, made 18, made 18 harder, 19. Now this is where he's paid for that. It wasn't as direct and fluent as he would have wished, but he's still up on the clock. Drop down here to 23. Needs to be tight and keep that kayak moving, coming round now. So this is a real challenge for the lead. So far, so good. Look at the power, look at the drive. And now on the flat water sprint towards the finish, this is going to be the new leader. And he's gone into the lead by, well, two and a quarter seconds. So a clean run. First man inside. 100 seconds but remember the fastest run time from the semi-finals was 97.64 from Bourgui who goes last for France but Hradilek shows that he's still got plenty to offer nice to see the smile nice to see that he's happy with what he's just done Poland will be next. Popiela didn't quite deliver. Can Polacic, who already has been a European champion, can he make a difference today? His victory was in Tatsun three years ago, like uh, Radilek in his early 30s. Doesn't look uh, to be quite as quick or well connected, but it's not bad. I don't think he'll be too far away. 1.08 to find. That's possible. Still okay, still clean. 15 gymnastic and moves the kayak slightly different line tighter to the gate there how effective that was not quite sure but very different from him from 
anybody else I've seen. And 18, that was good. That was better than uh, Khadilek. But uh, 2.28, it shows that there are little fractions being lost. Pelagic. This is better. This is much better. Now he's picking up speed. He's got some energy here. This is interesting. He's challenging. A uh, really good drive through 24 and 25 onto the flat water. Look at this. This is a fit man, and he's done it. 99.06. It's not the fastest time of the day, but it's the fastest in the final. And by 0.46, he pushes Radilek down into silver, Nico Testen to bronze, and Crespo off the podium. Good effort, and good to see uh, a Polish challenge. But next up, the defending champion, Fit Prindis. So he's going to get plenty of check check uh, support for sure. Before winning last year, he'd won in Vienna the European title in 2014. Different style to Fradilek. Different uh, approach to gate four, but effective. On terms with uh, Polacic, surely. Uh, two hundreds, nothing. Three checks made it into the final. This is the second of them. He sense he's building a challenge here. Drops down uh, earlier than uh, Polacic uh, did. And that's uh, proved to be more effective. Better through 18 and 19. Polacic was good in this final section, but at the moment, Vit Prindis, the defending champion, doing pretty well here to try and hold on to his title. Comes out of here and he's, well, by my reckoning, uh, well, he was a second to the good. He's lost a little bit of time, but is this good enough? Yes, it is. By 0.82, he uh, goes into the lead, into the gold uh, medal position. And so, uh, Vic Prindis, given a touch on gate number... Just having a look at this. Given a touch on gate number 10, and that has taken it away from him. Pelagic, actually... Remains the leader. Hradilak is second. Vic Prindis is third. And he hasn't realised that that gate has come, that touch has come up late. And gate 10, they'll no doubt have a look at that. But Polacic of Poland continues to lead. Now the second of the Swiss. Lucas Vero, who, uh, as you can see, used to do good things with his brother in the Canadian doubles, which so sadly are no longer part of the repertoire. This is determined. Vero. Top 10, as you saw in the Olympics in the C2. So that was in the uh, canoe. Now he's in a kayak and a second to the good. So good start. Chasing Polacic of Poland. It would be really good if the Swiss could grab a medal and they've still got Martin uh, Dugut to come as well. There's some strong French challengers, another Czech to come, a top Slovenian. This is all bubbling up nicely here. 11. And this has pushed him uh, a couple of seconds behind. Now, if he 
if he hadn't had that touch, he would have still been just over a second behind the current leader. As you can see, uh, 3.96, so he would have been, he's now two seconds behind on running time. Can he get on the podium? This is the question. He's chasing Vip Prindis in third place, uh, 100.24 seconds, which includes a two-second penalty. Can he get there? Not sure. No, not to be. Polacek continues to prevail and down to fifth place. Where did it all go wrong? Where did he lose the time? Well, essentially, if he hadn't had that touch, he would have been 102.41. So his position would still be uh, in uh, fifth place. Wearing uh, bib number five, Boris Neveu. Well, there you can see he's won this uh, title before, Boris. One thing he's really missed out on is representing his country at the Olympic Games. He's won the world title, did that in 2014, and uh, no less than 10 world championship medals and seven European ones, five golds amongst them. So, Boris for France. Two chances for the French now. Bergy will go last. It was notable last season how strong the French and the Czechs were. This is decent. 0.37 to the good. Nicely round 10. Good rhythm here from Boris. Yeah, this is really nice paddling by the Frenchman. Still OK. 15-16. Keeping that kayak going. Slightly different line. Drops down closer to the gate, but comes out of it nicely. Still, for me, he's got the edge over Polarczyk at the moment. Yes, he has. 1.13. Nicely through uh, 20. And now the big water gate. That was OK. Bit of the body and the shoulder and the boat going through the gate. That's uh, legal. 23 is good. Now he's challenging. Coming into 90 seconds. Just got to sprint through 25 and keep this going. Boris Never challenging for the lead. Is he fast enough? Only third. What a pity. For much of his run, he was in charge. A run of 99.71 clean but 0.65 off the gold medal as, it's, uh, as it is at the moment. Poland, the Czech Republic and France, the one, two, three at the moment. And now, <laughs> Balacic knows how close he was to losing the advantage. So we've had 10, five to come. And there you can see the top three all with clean runs. And uh, Polarch uh, Polarczyk with that run, 103.15 was his semi-final run. So that's a real decent improval. improvement, I should say. Prishkovic getting ready, but the next man on the water is going to be the legendary Slovenian Petr Kauza. Olympic silver medalist uh, Petr in uh, Rio and uh, a tremendous record of achievement. World champion in 2011 and 2017. <coughs> European champion as well. including uh, here in Prague in 2018 and won the World Cup in 29, 2009, 2011 and also uh, 2015. 
retains his appetite for this sport. He's a fighter. He's come back from injuries on several occasions and it would be very special if he could do well on this course here, Peter Kauser. Nico Testa and his teammate down to fifth, a respectable fifth, I have to say. Yes, not by much, but he's in front. Now, can he keep this run going, Pedder? You can imagine during COVID-19, it's been very difficult for these athletes to train to achieve maximum fitness. 16, looks okay. Still okay for time for me, I think. Through 19 to uh, 20. And he's still got the edge, Peter Kauser of Slovenia. Now, the big water gate, 21 to 22, then break out to his left to 23. Come on, Peter. This would be a tremendous fillip for him as he goes through 24. Ducks and dives, but does it, and now drives for the line. Got to be inside, 98.49, and is he there? He is, by 0.57, brilliant. Brilliant from Peter Kauser of Slovenia, and Kauser at the uh, age, uh, what is he now, 37. He's the oldest man on the course today. And he holds the gold medal position at the moment. Belarczyk drops to second. Pradilek still in third. And Boris Never off the podium. But acknowledgement there from Polarczyk at a quality performance. Well, now the man who represents the Geneva Canoe Club, uh, Martin uh, Dugood. 29, has already qualified for next year's Olympics in Tokyo, fingers crossed. Has spent a good deal of time uh, living in Po, where, of course, the French have a, a really fantastic training base. Swiss national champion and top 15 last year, hoping for much better than just top 15 this time. You have to go for it at the top here to ensure that you make speed and then try to keep the advantage. He's not that far away. 0.61. That is not bad at all. Considering uh, Kauser's effort, but he's got to find a little bit more. Kauser was great. Again, he's got rhythm here. different sort of spin but it wasn't as quick as uh, the likes of Kauser and there again he's negotiated the gate but he's just lost fractions there and I would say that he's about a second and a half yeah 1.91 a little bit more almost two seconds down still clean though he'd have to uh, be dynamite down here to catch Kauser but you just never know. Could he get on the podium? Wouldn't that be good? Still some challenges to come, but it's been a good European Championship so far for Martin Dugood. He had an improved season last year driving. He's outside time, the time of Kauser, but sixth place, that two-second deficit, he just couldn't get back on it and uh, goes in to sixth place. He is the best of the Swiss. Lucas Vero currently in eighth place and Dimitri Max in 11th. Three to go. And what a three we've got. Uh, Yuri Pushkovic, the Rio Olympic bronze medalist. Felix Oschmaltz for Austria, the 2017 Junior World uh, Champion and last year's bronze medalist. So... Well, this is the last chance for the uh, Czechs. Won the world title in 2015 and then did it again last year. 
So uh, Yeri uh, Prishkovic is dad, along with Anne Broxell, the two course designers, and from France. So uh, Prishkovic at the moment, Fradilek uh, holding on to the bronze medal, but who knows, maybe not for much longer. Chasing Kauser's time of Slovenia. Quicker by three quarters of a second. That's impressive. Knows the water well. Anticipation really good. Set in his mind where he's going, what he's doing. The exits uh, to each gate, determining the entry to the next. And that's really good work. He's sort of level pegging with Kauser at the moment, I think. Not much in it. Has he got the edge still? That's the big question. Yes, he has. Now to uh, 20, breakout. Can't afford any errors. Can't af afford to be held up in any shape or form. That isn't as easy as it looks as you drop down, but the breakout here, that's okay. Just the kayak, not quite as efficient. But Yuri Priskovic, perfect through 24, good through 25, yes, now sprinting, it's Kauser of Slovenia, Priskovic of the Czech Republic, Priskovic gets it by half a second, a diminishing uh, margin of advantage, but at the end of the day, good enough to put him into first place, Kauser drops to second, Polacic of Poland drops to third, and Radilek of the Czech Republic off the podium with Boris Neveu in fifth place. Two to go. One for Austria, one for France. It's not over yet. The time, 97.97. That's still not quicker than Burgi's time winning the semi-final. But Kauza appreciating what he's just seen. That's what I love about the sport. There's great sportsmanship. And now the promising Felix uh, Oschmaltz for uh, Austria, only 21, plenty of under 23 uh, medals, silvers and bronzes, but this is the seniors, this is the major championship, maybe we don't have Great Britain or Germany here, or Slovakia, or indeed Russia, but this is still hugely competitive. And we're sad not to have them here, but they've all got valid reasons in the world we live in now. It's not far behind. There's that first uh, breakout and he's got that 50 on gate 5 and if that's uh, held or maintained I should say that will um, unfortunately do for him in terms of medals and Prishkovic will know that he's got at least uh, a gold or sorry at least a medal along with Peter Kauser they'll know they'll both be medalists but they won't know what colour I'm sure the chief judge will check that 50. It's uh, part of the protocol. So, this is... Uh, he wouldn't be fast enough anyway. And uh, run time of 101.98, so... Unfortunately, he drops down the order. That's disappointing, really disappointing for the Austrian. But there's one man to come. So, Prishkovic for the Czech Republic in gold. Peter Kauser for Slovenia in silver. Now, where's that? There's the uh, miss and the 50. And unfortunately, that looks as if it's going to stand. So, it's down to uh, Quentin uh, Bourgui of France. 28 years of age and the bronze medalist last year. Can he turn bronze into gold, the bearded Frenchman? So, Bourgui, 
97.64 is running time. If he does that again, he'll be the European champion. Plenty of pressure on his shoulders here. Not as dynamic a start, but uh, again, it's a different style. You can see his paddle strokes just a little bit longer. And he's okay, I think. Yeah. 0.39 for the Frenchman. France versus the Czech Republic at the moment for European gold. Still okay, still uh, according to the computer, no errors, but that's low and wide and that's lost him a little bit of time. He'd made time, but he's lost a, a little bit. A 0.57 to the good, that's all he has in hand. Kauza was half a second behind Preskovic. That was the difference between uh, those two men. Bergin just not as accurate, not quite as precise as he was in the semi-finals. And this doesn't look to be quite as quick. He's losing time now, uh, and he's looking tired. You can see the shoulders rocking from side to side. It's going to be Priskovic. It's going to be surely Priskovic. It is as uh, Burgi goes into third place and pushes Polacic off the podium. That's disappointing for the Polish paddler. But the gold goes to the Czech Republic, unofficially that is at the moment. Then Peter Kauza for Slovenia in silver, that's excellent. And then Quentin Burgi, the bronze medalist last year, looks as if he's the bronze medalist this year as well. 97.97, a clean run by Yuri Priskovic, and he is the European champion. It was a promising start, and it wasn't too bad during the middle section. But he ran out of gas. But he's got a medal. And Priskovic, once again, the man who has succeeded for the Czech Republic. His father, Yuri, designed, or was one of the two course designers, and competed in world and European championships. Delighted he will be to see his son at the top of the table. Delighted for Petr Kauza. Excellent run from the 37-year-old Slovenian, Quentin Berge, in third place. And Antoine Luane, well, 12th for Portugal. He's improving all the time. He was seventh in the world last year. Easy, congratulations. And another another the champion. title for you. It was a very close race today. It was very close and uh, that's uh, pretty weird compared to the course because uh, it was really hard and there were so many moves and I didn't expect such a tight race but that uh, the win means way more with, with such a close margins. You were second here in Troja in World Champs 2013 and uh, in the European Champs uh, 2018. So the first big title here in your home course yeah it's a very special moment and i'm truly happy about uh, about my runs and and about especially about the final run and uh, happy to take the the crown home your form is uh, incredible you won uh, last uh, international race one year ago in seo that was a world champs, now European champs, and next year is uh, Tokyo Olympic Games, and uh, you were he you will be here. So, um, is it in your head? Yeah, it is definitely now. Uh, I was trying to not think about Tokyo and just think about this uh, final race here, and then concentrate on Tokyo. Now the race is done. I won. Uh, it's a nice end of the season for me. Uh, I'll have some rest now and I'll start my preparation towards Tokyo and I'm super excited for that. Big congratulation. Thank you. Well, a delighted uh, first European title for uh, Priskovic, uh, world champion in 2015 and again last year and twice an overall World Cup champion. He takes the gold medal ahead of Peter Kauser and uh, he was the winner back here in 2018. 
and uh, in third place uh, we have uh, Matthias uh, Polacic of Poland so that's a, a really excellent result to uh, see a Polish paddler on the uh, podium three different countries taking the medals and uh, congratulations to these three men in fourth place uh, Hradilek and then Boris Never the best for France at the end of it all, Vic Prindis, disappointing, and Martin Dugood, the best of the Swiss. And in fact, uh, I've got Burgi down now. It's been a change, and Burgi is now down to uh, eighth place with a two-second touch, um, and that has given Polarczyk uh, third place. So, 1.09 seconds separating the top. From the boogie given to him, just keeping him out of the medals uh, so no repeat of last year and the medal ceremony is uh, coming right up uh, for the women's canoe and also the men's kayak well one of the things uh, you've heard from the paddlers themselves that this has been a really demanding course that's been set it's kept them moving from side to side across try up right the way through yesterday's heats and today's semi-finals and finals it's been a real test of not only skill but fitness as well at the moment the results are unofficial they're being checked as we speak Well, I hope you've enjoyed the finals. We've still got the team finals to come in a little over an hour. But uh, if you have enjoyed it, well, why not uh, click on follow and like and let us know. Uh, if you've got any thoughts and comments, well, uh, just drop me a line to this email address, nordicskitv at gmail.com. Uh, love to hear your feedback. This is uh, effectively the first outing for echo.tv. A very different sitting here in London commentating remotely. I wish I was in Prague, but I'm not allowed, not able to do that, unfortunately. But uh, I think uh, hats off to, as I said, Yaroslav Pollert and the Czech uh, Canoe Slalom Federation for what they've achieved here. And also to uh, the Czech television for the effort they've put into making this happen.
and uh, the medal ceremonies of course because of COVID-19 are different you'll notice that when the medals are to be presented uh, I believe it'll be Branko Loverich, the General Secretary of the European Canoe Association, will have the medals on a tray and the athletes will be invited to take the medal and uh, put it over their heads. It'll be the medal ceremony for the women first. And I can just remind you and confirm to you officially now that Gabriela Satkova of the Czech Republic will receive the gold medal. Teresa Fizarova also from the Czech Republic, will receive the silver, and Lucy Priou of France will collect the bronze. Tomorrow, the remaining two individual categories and team events in the women's kayak and the men's single Canadian canoe. First medal ceremony, women's Canadian canoe accompanied by Lucia Urvalkova, the chief financial officer of Unika Polišťovna, will present the medals. Dámy a pánové, těm nejlepším budou gratulovat Miroslav Haviar, viceprezident Evropské kanoistické federace. Well, it's uh, Miroslav Haviar from Slovakia, member of the executive board of the European Canoe Federation, vice president. Lucy Priu, France! So, congratulations to Lucy Priu, donning the regulation mask and she takes the medal, puts it over her head from uh, Miroslav. And congratulations, no handshakes, social Martin distancing. Skala. The silver medalist is Teresa Fischerová, Česká Republika! The Czechs get excited, it's Teresa Fischerová who uh, will collect her silver medal, this 22-year-old. It's the third time she's been a runner-up in a major championship in 2017. She was runner-up in the world and, and Europeans. The and the European champion is... Champion, champion of Europe. A big moment, a first major championship for Gabriela Satkova. Almost... Uh, at 19 years of age, uh, Satkova, runner-up in the World Championship team, the Czech team, and Satkova. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem of the Czech Republic. Runner-up in the under-23 team worlds last year. And there you are, your three champions, because they are in their own way on the podium. So, success for the Czech Republic. Gold and silver, and now we get ready for the men's competition. And I can now confirm to you that the men's result has become official. Yuri Prishkovic, the champion from Peter Kauser, Czech Republic from Slovenia. Matthias Polacic of Poland will collect the bronze because of the two-second penalty that was added to Quentin Burgi's time. And that has denied him a bronze medal. So the preparations 
for the men's ceremony being made. Live, the national anthem of the Czech Republic. She's too modest to step in the front. V kategorii singlí řek jsme navíc, a na to nezapomínejme, na šestém místě měli ještě Terku Knéblovou, nejmladší účastnici dnešního finále, která nebýt té chyby na sedmnáce, toho pravého náklonu a toho bouchnutí zadkem opraví břeh, by tady nejspíš na stupních so, byla také... Gabriela Sacco was just uh, reflecting on her achievements, champion here, but a silver medal at the Canoe Slalom World Championships with the team of the Czech Republic in Rio, and that was two years ago. So here's the uh, lineup for the men's medal ceremony. Good, efficient organization here. And uh, my check's not too good, but I think that was recognition for Fabrinek uh, Radilak, who finished uh, a terrific fourth and uh, missed out on the medals, the bronze medal in the end by, what would that be, um, less than half a second. So Yuri Priskovic to collect the gold, Petr Kauza to collect the silver, Matthias Polacic to collect the uh, bronze medal. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the medalist for the men's kayak. Branko Lovic, the Secretary so, General of the European Canoe Association. So uh, it is uh, Mr. Branko Lovic in the center of that little trio on the left of your picture there, the General Secretary of the Federation to European Federation to make the presentations. The first medal to Matthias uh, Polacek, who finished in third place, the champion of Europe back in 2017 in Tatsun. And... Uh, got a silver in the team competition here a couple of years ago 32 years of age uh, it's a massive paddling family there's three brothers involved in the family all paddle and two sisters and they've all competed in slalom so Peter Kauser for Slovenia Olympic silver medalist, uh, world champion twice, two-time European champion, including last time here in Prague in 2018, and uh, what is it, three times uh, World Cup champion, and the success story goes on and on, and uh, there it is, uh, a big moment for Preskovic, his first Euro European silver title, he's Achieved uh, tremendous things at the World Championships, two titles, and he was the Rio Olympic bronze medalist in 2016, and he's won the selection race to go to Tokyo for next year. But the Czech Republic, Slovenia and Poland, they succeed, and they are the medalists, and now the national anthem of the Czech Republic to recognize Preskovic's achievement.
Now three superb athletes. And of course we hope to see them and a full house of athletes next year in Ivrea where the 2021 European Championships will take place in Italy. We're not finished today, by the way. We have the which start at uh, 3 o'clock Central European time. Five nations represented in the women's Canadian uh, single team final. Uh, Italy, Slovenia, Spain, France and the Czech Republic and 12 men's kayak teams. And there you can see the Czech Republic, uh, somewhat predictably, ahead in the uh, team medal table. But who knows what might happen after we've uh, completed the team races here on ECA TV. So I hope you've enjoyed the action so far today. As I said, uh, if you have, uh, then uh, why not click on that uh, little link, follow and like. And this is just a heads up for tomorrow, nine o'clock Central European time, women's kayak semi-final. And uh, also the finals there midday a little bit earlier uh, than today for the final of the women's kayak and the men's at uh, just after the half hour and then the two teams and then everybody round about four o'clock will be on their way home and hopefully we'll have got through this without any uh, health problems whatsoever and that's my great wish at the end of this that uh, we not only have a great competition but the measures that have been taken in Prague by all concerned will have worked and that the European Championships have been kept alive in 2020. NordicSkiTV at gmail.com if you want to send me a comment or a thought. Uh, always happy because this is uh, the, really the beginning of ECA TV. We're much more to come in the future. It feels a bit funny uh, commentating from the UK rather than being in Prague. Uh, but nonetheless, I, I hope you've got the feeling of the place and uh, the pictures from Czech TV have given you a, a good competition to enjoy at home. So it's an early start, but why not have breakfast with us tomorrow and enjoy the semi-finals? Um, and if you can't do that, well, join us for lunch for the finals and uh, an early cup of tea for the team events. So on behalf of myself, uh, David Goldstrom, I want to say thank you on behalf of the Czech Federation and uh, Czech TV. Thank you for watching and thank you for being with us. As I said, we're not done. We're uh, just coming up to two o'clock and we're an hour away from those team finals. So please do join us if you can for the women's and men's team finals in today's uh, categories. Maybe they're not uh, Olympic, but they're fun. And I think uh, in the circumstances we find ourselves a bit of fun and extra enjoyment, that's worth having. And the waters of the River Vltava they flow on the far side, but uh, when they're channeled down here, as you've seen today, they are a real challenge. So uh, almost uh, time for us to take our leave momentarily, of course, not uh, forever and a day. But uh, as I said, uh, team events to uh, come. So not much more to add to what we've done already. For now, for the next hour or so, I'll take my leave, but look forward to your company at three o'clock Central European time.